a very good morning students we are in our regular class lecture and the today's topic of discussion is the rock cleavage actually a rock cleavage is a set of closely spaced planar parallel secondary element that imparts a mechanical anisotropy to the rock and do not cause an apparent loss of cohesion in the rock so this is the very simplest definition which is by Dennis in 1977 so according to him a rock cleavage is a secondary fabric element that has been imparted after the formation of rock and this secondary fabric element does not disturb any cohesion property of the rock and this secondary element should cause as anisotropy in the rock that is a change of any physical property according to the direction so this is a very simplest definition by Dennis you can just follow or use the same definition the cleavage rock generally shows two dominal structure that is a rock a cleavage rock consisting of two different portions the one is that cleavage domain and the second one is the microlithons so we should be very clear with these two terms the cleavage domain is a domain in which the original fabric of the rock has been strongly altered whereas in microlithons the original fabric has undergone little or even no alteration so according to the Dennis a uh, rock a uh, cleavage rock can be uh, divided into two different portions a single rock so portion which is uh, strongly altered in the fabric can be considered as cleavage domain whereas the portion where there is no or little alteration of that rock is considered as microlithons so the cleavage domain usually shows a strong preferred mineral orientation that is parallel to the cleavage and that, is, and that is described as films, folio and seam, seam. As you know the difference in these three terms is the thickness. A film is a very fine or uh, say uh, less than one millimeter or something. Uh, folio is uh, quite uh, thicker than film and seam is uh, even much bigger than the folio. So all these three terms indicate that is a uh, fab that is a planar fabric okay the rock cleavage are divided into two basic types so you can classify the rock cleavage uh, broadly into two types the one is that when the cleavage domain are so thick that the microlithons are not exist or indistinguishable in the microscopic scale and such a type of cleavage is called continuous cleavage so if a rock is completely off completely has been altered in its fabric level and the cleavage domain is very dominant and you are even unable to see the microlithons in microscopic level then that, that rock is considered as a continuous cleavage in the, well, the totally opposite sense is that when the cleavage domain consisting of sharp extremely thin uh, discontinuities along which there is a little or no preferred orientation of mineral are called spaced cleavage so if the rock is uh, completely altered by in fabric level that it is a continuous cleavage and if the same if other rock uh, is, uh, say altered for a very minor level then it is called a spaced cleavage and remember the term cleavage has been used irrespective of the type of rock in which the structure occurs so the cleavage is a generalized term it can be further divided according to the type of the rock in which it occurs. For example, you can use the term cystosity is restricted to the continuous cleavage in somewhat coarse grained rock. So the cystosity is a type of rock cleavage. That is what they want to explain. So the rock cleavage is a generalized term. You can further divide it into according to the rock or the character of the rock in which it appears. The next one is the slaty cleavage is a corresponding term for cystosity but it indicates a very fine grained slaty rock. The foliation is uh, in the sense of in, that is the foliation according to Hobbes in 1977 includes all type of cleavage both continuous or spaced as well as bedded and metamorphic banding. So all such a thing can be continuously or can be comparatively or generally called as foliation according to Hobbes. The spaced cleavage may be either a crenellation cleavage according to Nell 1960 or disjective cleavage uh, Powell 1979. In the development of crenellation cleavage you can see there is a micro folding of a earlier cleavage. So you can see this is the 
this fluid may be formed at the earlier stage it may be straight line this has been uh, granulated due to the secondary disturbance that is the granulation cleavage according to knell 1960 whereas the disjective cleavage are not associated with such microfolding you can see this uh, straight line so this is a disjective cleavage in which the mineral orientation is uh, somewhat parallel not actually parallel but uh, to some extent it is parallel so the mic morphological classification as given above is of uh, comparatively recent origin that is uh, the origin is uh, uh, around 1972 and that is by Dennis and uh, Powell, okay. So we'll see the next heading that is the geomorphic relation with the folding. So the first type of uh, uh, cleavage is the axial plane cleavage. That cleavage surface in most deformed terrain or approximately parallel to the axial plane of the fold was recognized. And this common variety of cleavage is called as the axial plane cleavage. So a cleavage uh, plane which is parallel to the axial plane of the folded region is called as the axial plane cleavage. An axial plane cleavage may be slaty cleavage or cystosity or granulated cleavage whatever it is but that should be parallel to the axial plane of the fold of that region. So that is uh, that can be termed as an axial plane cleavage and remember if uh, area undergoes superposed deformation that is the deformation is in different stages say cycle 1, cycle 2, cycle 3 likewise if the area has been deformed in uh, say three cycles so there will be formation of fold one that is f1 and f2 and f3 and you can see the cleavage for the first f1 set of folding there will be a cleavage that uh, the cleavage use the term uh, letter s so that can be mentioned as s1 in the same way if there is a folding in f2 there will be a cleavage of the same time origin that is the s2 uh, likewise f3 there will be s3 so in superimposed deformation you can see uh, different sets of cleavage but remember the re recently formed cleavage will be uh, like a straight line or a plane in appearance but the previously formed cleavage might have been deformed due to the next formation of the folding okay so the axial plane cleavage may be shown local deviation from the orientation of the axial plane the deviation may show up in the form of cleavage fan or cleavage refraction. In either case, trace of the cleavage on the form, so form surface is approximately parallel to the folding hinge. Moreover, the cleavage at the hinge zone is generally parallel to the axial plane. So you, when you are seeing the cross section, you might be feeling that the cleavage might be, uh, say, deviating from the axial plane. But when you are seeing from the top, the, you can just understand that the cleavage is always parallel to the axial plane you can see here this is the axial plane then you can see the cleavage just run parallel to the axial plane here but you might be feeling that it is deviating from the center right here is also the same uh, thing happening and the axial plane cleavage and the bedding fissile are both prominent that is they both are very strong what happens the rock has been ten has a tendency to break up along the elongated fragment so the axial plane cleavage as well as the bedding facility are so strong the rock will be break uh, like a parallel pencil like structure and that is called as the pencil structure. Uh, so the bedding plane is also strong so they will break along the bedding plane and the um, rock cleavage is also so dominant so this will also break along the uh, rock cleavage. So this portion will can be separated out and that is considered as a pencil structure the next one is the cleavage refraction there is often a symmetrical change in the angle between the bedding and the cleavage in different part of the fold layer this causes a fanning of the cleavage the cleavage fan may be converged or diverged you can see this is a converging towards here and uh, this could be like a diverging from here right and uh, the cleavage fan may be convergent or divergent depending on whether the cleavage surface converges towards the core or towards the convex side of the fold. So this two terms that is the convergent and divergent have been mentioned by Ramsey in 1967. Where competent and incompetent layer are interrelated, the bedding cleavage angle is larger in the competent unit 
than in the incompetent unit. Such a change in the orientation of the cleavage forms layer to layer is known as the cleavage refraction. So you can see the reason behind this uh, refraction or uh, convergence whatever it is that is due to the competency contrast in the rock as you we have discussed in the previous classes the competent rock is one which will not fold to simply break whereas the incompetent rock is one which uh, which can bend to a larger extent right so when there is a change in the competency of the rock uh, rock beds what you can expect is this type of uh, cleavage refractions the next one is the transected cleavage. What happens in some places apart from the fanning and refraction, the cleavage occur at distinct angle with the fold hinge. You can see this is the fold hinge or fold axis and this is the cleavage plane and there is, a diff there is an angle between these two and such a kind of uh, cleavage is called transected cleavage. As a result of exposure of the foam surface, the surf trace of the cleavage is found to transect the fold hinge. This type of cleavage is called non-axial plane cleavage that is according to Stinger and Triangles in 1980 or the transected cleavage and this term was coined by Ramsey and Huber in 1987. A transected cleavage is not a lateral generation of the cleavage superimposed on the earlier generation of the fold. Like the axial plane cleavage, it forms during some stage of folding. So according to Powell, what he explains is, this uh, transection cleavage will also form along with the folding. This is not a lateral or previously origined one, that is according to Powell. Okay? In some areas, there is a systematic change in the sense of transection over a large scale structure and uh, thus reports a uh, different sense of transection from the two limbs of the large scale fold while at the core of the fold the cleavage is axial plane planar so what they are saying is you can see a different orientation of the cleavage a different portion of a fold but many times what happens all this uh, cleavage may converge at the core of the fold that is according to morph he had mentioned uh, such a thing what he had seen in his uh, location. Although axial plane cleavage and transector cleavage are closely related and are often associated in the field, the distinction between the two is essential for a correct analysis of the geometry of the fold. Because uh, many times what happens, we may think that is an axial plane cleavage and we measure the axial plane as the cleavage plane and that may lead to some misunderstanding, right? So we should be very clear to find whether the cleavage is an axial plane one or a transected one. The bedding plane cleavage interest the bedding plane cleavage intersect can be used to determine the orientation of the fold axis only if the cleavage is axial plane and not transected one. Remember, if the axial plane cleavage is present, the intersection between the bedding plane and the axial plane cleavage will form a linear future, and such a linear future will be parallel to the axial plane but if the cleavage is non-axial plane that is a transector cleavage we cannot use this uh, relationship and there is also other relationship between the cleavage and the rock that is what they are going to explain that is the not all cleavage are associated with folding when the ductile shear zone development in a massive rock like a granite or greenstone what happens the cleavage which initially developed from the massive rock is not associated with the synchronous system of the folding. So the cleavage is also formed which is not associated with the folding. In the previous headings what we saw is the relation with the folding, right? There are also cleavages which is not related to the folding. So that is what they are explaining here. So the cleavage is also present in granite and greenstone which is not synchronous with the folding. So we will see what is the use of axial plane cleavage in geometric analysis. The use of axial plane cleavage in the geometric analysis of an area been emphasized by earlier workers and discussed in detail by Leith, Billings and Wilson. So these are three main workers who had worked in the cleavage and they had given relation between the axial plane and the geometric analysis. So this heading is from their paper. Once the cleavage in an area is identified as an axial plane cleavage from the observation in a few critical outcrops, 
the orientation of the axial cleavage can be taken as an orientation of the axial plane throughout the entire area for example if you are working in a area which is consisting of a, say a large scale folds and if you are having very few outcrops and even the few outcrops if you found a cleavage and that is actually parallel to the axial plane you can just simply trace the cleavage and you can use that cleavage data as the axial plane data so that is the very first use of the axial plane cleavage the second one is that as pointed out by Leith in 1923 the trace of bedding on a cleavage surface is approximately parallel to the fold axis that you can see here so this line is a bedding plane line right the green one then orange one like that and this one is the cleavage plane right so this cleavage plane and the bedding plane intersect and form a line that is a linear future and that linear future will be parallel to the axial plane so if you found such a thing you can simply trace that linear future and you can use this as a axial plane and this intersection lineation this is an intersection lineation is often utilized to determine the orientation of the fold axis where the hinge lines or mesoscopic folds or unexposed so in an unexposed region like uh, if your FIFE is just finding some bedding plane and the axial plane cleavage intersect you can use this intersection lineation to measure the axial plane of the large scale fold the bedding and axial plane cleavage remains at high angle to each other at the hinge of the fold and this geometric relation can sometimes be used to locate the hinge zone of the large scale fold you can see here this is the bedding plane right and this is your axial plane cleavage you can see this is somewhat parallel in this region but when you cross this portion you can see there is a, almost a right angle relationship between the bedding plane and the axial plane cleavage so when you are seeing such a thing that there is a right angle relation between the cleavage plane and the axial plane and that portion will be the hinge of the fold so you can use this to locate the hinge of the fold in a large scale folding in other portion you can see the angle relation is uh, less than 90 degrees that is actually an acute angle the relative steepness of the bedding and the cleavage enable us to distinguish between the normal and the overturned limb of an antiform and synform. In normal limb what happens? The cleavage is steep then the bedding. Mm, the reverse limb what happens? There will be vice versa. You can see here the cleavage is steeper than the bedding. You can, If you are measuring the angle between the bedding and the cleavage, this is a normal limb, right? So you can simply find out the angle of a bedding is uh, say rough, uh, less than the actual plane cleavage. In the same uh, bed in the overturned limb you can see the angle relationship that here the bedding plane is having higher angle when compared to the actual plane cleavage. So this is also one of the relation that we can use in your geometric analysis. So these are the four main uses of the axial plane cleavage that we can use in our geometric analysis. The first one is that we can use the axial plane cleavage as it is for the measurement of your axial plane. The second one is that the intersection between the axial plane and bedding plane will form an intersection lineation and that will be parallel to the fold axis. And the third one is that if there is a relation between the axial plane and the hinge that is the relation is say 90 degree approximately so when you are seeing a uh, bedding plane and an uh, axial plane cleavage cuts one another at 90 degree and that shows that is the hinge of a large scale fold and you can also find out the overturning or a regular bed according to the angle between the axial plane and the bedding plane if the bedding plane is having lesser angle when compared to the axial plane cleavage then it is a normal limb if the bedding plane is having higher angle when compared to the axial plane then it is an overturned limb with this i am completing with this heading that is the rock cleavage and if you still have any doubt you can just discuss in the class thank you